the hip dysplasia. Uh-huh. And uh, there was really not much you could do because the surgery was so expensive and everything. And I was just wondering if if your method of healing would could have helped my dogs. Well, uh, you know, that's it's it's one of those questions that it's looking back, it's hard to say. But what I can tell you is that I have had clients whose animals have been diagnosed with hip dysplasia who, after getting worked on, uh, it apparently went away, whatever that was. So I think I think really what happens is that animals get diagnoses because something looks like hip dysplasia or it looks like uh, some sort of degenerative condition, and so they put a label on it. But then I do what I do, and it gets better. I I don't think I'm getting those diagnosed conditions better. I think I'm restoring normalcy to a system that was out of balance, and those labels just were not really uh, accurate or appropriate for that animal's condition. But they get better. Oh, that's fantastic. And I know it's very, very rewarding. How many animals, uh, on average, would you say per week or per month you work with, or does it vary considerably? Well, of course it varies somewhat, but uh, let's see. Last week, um, I, if I recall, I I only go out I actually into the uh, – I go out on the road, as I call it, my road practice, uh, once a week. Uh, some In Seattle area, I've just started doing twice a week. Uh, but, uh, you know, the second day is not real big. So what I end up with is probably seeing about uh, between 10 and 15 a week. Wow. Keeps you very busy, I guess. Yes, it does. Uh, I'm, I'm actually transitioning. I still have a human practice. Uh, I guess I call it a chiropractic practice, but uh, it's all energy work. Uh, and I love what Donia says about it's all energy. That's what my mentor has said for the last 40 years. <laughs> and so I really relate to that. It's all energy because that's that's what I'm working with. I, no, I so much agree. That's just that's just the common theme of tonight. And Dr. Nell, this is this is um, Wendy. I'd just like to say thank you for the wonderful work you've done with my cat, with my rabbit, with me personally, with family members. I just really, really am very appreciative. You know, Wendy, uh, I'd like you to tell a little bit about this rabbit. What the heck went on there? I'm still kind of mystified. Yes, um, our our rabbit was healthy as could be, um, and just all of a sudden, I looked at him one day and I kind of squinted my eyes because he was just not looking right at all, and I could see something was um, you know really going on with him. And he reminded me of what our other rabbit had looked like when he had passed on. And again, it was just too too young, and and just nothing. I, I knew it was energetic. I just I knew it was energetic. He was going through something, enduring something, and I just I really thought he needed clearing. He needed he needed help because um, you know something was 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 not not right. And I I came home early from work one day because I did not want my high school daughter, whose rabbit it was, I didn't want her to go through finding him dead in the hutch like her older sister had gone through with the other rabbit. And it just was, it was as clear as day to call you and and get some assistance. So I believe what he did was he had a near-death experience um, and he really, really went out of his body because uh, Darcy Pariso was able to tune in to him, as was Robin Alexis. So two um, very, very psychic um, friends were, were helping with it, too, and said, wow, your, your rabbit, um, he's, he's basically gone. He's basically, you know, he's passing over. There's very, very little of him left. And it's like, well, what is the reason for that? And when he came back into his body after you started working with him for a day or two, um, he spoke to Darcy and he said, I had no idea how many people loved me. I had no idea I would be put on social media. <laughs> he actually used the term social media, which I thought was hysterical because you would ask me to send a picture of him and I'd put him on my Facebook and different folks were saying, you know, let's, let's send some love and prayers and energy to this rabbit because it's a healthy young rabbit and what is going on here. And he told Darcy, 
I wanted to really experience love. And I had no idea how loved I was, so I came back. Wow, that's a that's really a great story. I'm getting kind of choked up over here. <laughs> yeah, that that was that was the that was what occurred. So he's doing great. He's done great ever since. But I, you I know, just, we we as humans vastly underestimate the intelligence of animals and and the, their spiritual level of awareness, don't we? But that's do. true. Yeah, and you know uh, this uh, this dog that I uh, talked talked about in Sacramento that I worked on last Sunday. One of the things that I found I needed to do was work with the feeling of good, and this happens a lot with dogs in particular. They really want to know that they're good, and so while we were doing the energy work, we were uh, me and the. Uh, the two, the couple were both. Uh, we were kept telling her that she was good, and and it seemed to do her a lot of good to hear that. So I, I find that a lot with the dogs. Always, they want to know that they're good, and they need to really get that feeling from their people. That's interesting. You know, to say that my cat wants to know that all the time. He wants to be praised and to hear that he's a great cat and that he's very good and that I appreciate him in my life because. He struggles with being a cat. He's usually a different type of energetic being. Ah, interesting. Yeah, you know, uh, my cat is uh, sort of like the opposite. He's he, <laughs> he wants to know that uh, we respect and admire him. <laughs> well, well, yes. You, you probably work for him a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> the Egyptian temple cat routine. <laughs> yeah. Did That's, I hear um, this yeah, is, go this ahead. is Anya. Um, yes. Uh, I just like to say that that desire to be recognized as good, that that carries over into the to the uh, certainly as far as the gray space. But every dog that I've talked to assures me that he or she is a good dog. And uh, the one time that I had one who said he wasn't was the one who had gotten out of the yard and ran away to the river to play. And he says I was a bad dog. I I took my ball and went to the river. But then oh. he explained that he was he was lonely and he needed someone to play with. But he Ben of course took care of him, made sure he knew he was a good dog. But that's right. that's a real issue for them. They really need to, to, to know that they're good. Yes, they do. That uh I get that over and over. I, I do some remote healing over a radio station out of uh Bellevue, Washington and yes, it's it seems to be a recurring theme, all right. Well, I just love the work that you do. I just, I'm, I think it's absolutely thrilling. Yeah, and it's, 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 of course, it also seems so natural. It just seems like such a reasonable thing to do. Well, you know, it's funny because uh, this is this is an area I started out as kind of a, a dyed in the wool, just ordinary chiropractor, and then I just through experiences, uh, my technique changed, the things I learned that helped change until I got to the point where it just became this energy work that I do now. And uh, I never saw myself as being the kind of person who would be doing this work, especially at a distance. I could see doing it hands-on. But uh, this non-locality thing, when I discovered that, and that, you know, I could simply tune in if there was a person there with their animal and they said, my animal needs some help, I could tune into that and start finding what needs to be done. Uh, it surprised me. It wasn't something that uh, I'd ever thought that I would be doing, that's for sure. We surprise and ourselves. It, <laughs> and it, it really it really is equally effective because my very first appointment I had for myself with Dr. Nels was in his office. And it, it, was a, it was a long hike. It was almost a two-hour drive from where I live. So I, I was a little bit hesitant to switch to phone, but I got such wonderful results in person with him and a friend had said you know phone appointment works just as well and he's going to tune in and you're going to know what to do and you'll just go through the same best technique um, the DEST and it will be awesome and in half an hour I couldn't believe what we would cover we would work through things for me we would work through things for my animals work through things for my family in 30 minutes and all I had to do was go lay on my bed and have a phone appointment. It was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, uh, I, you know, it's just, I, I just am continually blown away by what people tell me about what they experience when I do that. It's, 
to me, it's not that big a deal. I'm just doing what I do, but apparently they're having wonderful experiences. And I guess, you know, one, one sort of proof of how well uh, this stuff works is I have people who, you know, who, who use me over and over, you know, they, they set me up on a weekly schedule because they want to maintain an ongoing level of progress. And uh, I guess that, I, in fact, I'll just mention one person in particular. I had heard from my daughter that before she had ever met me, she told my daughter that, well, that man must be practicing some sort of devil's work. And I just kind of like whatever, you know. And anyway, she uh, later on, uh, she came to see me in person. And then when she had to move away, and now she's off in Arkansas, uh, then I started working with her over the phone, and it was like no big deal to her. So something about her attitudes about the world had changed as well. It's and called everywhere. having your, your mind opened. <laughs> exactly. And that's happening everywhere. The awareness level is increasing exponentially. Is uh, It's accelerating, isn't it, Wendy? Absolutely. Yeah, it's not the know. high energy. It's not the high energy knot. This was a very good knot for this type of show because you can feel the energy tonight. It's, it's oh. a very high energy knot. Very definitely true. I was just uh, helping to teach a seminar on uh, best bioenergetic synchronization technique uh, that happened in Seattle this last weekend. And what amazed me, because we're talking about how the energy in the world is shifting. Well, when when I started to learn this, for most people, there's a part of the technique where we learn how to get a yes and a no so we can adopt a sort of binary approach to asking questions and getting answers. And it used to take people uh, the whole weekend just to get a yes and a no, and some people it would take months and months. And now if people come into the seminar, they uh, step up to the uh, practice table after getting some instruction from the front of the room, and they just start doing it, and it's like it's no big deal. <laughs> so that's a big shift to go from people who can't even – hardly comprehend it, to people just walking up who've never done it before, and they're getting their yeses and their noes, and they're asking the questions that we learn to ask to get the uh, the results that we want to get. Wow, that is amazing. Yeah, it really showed me the shift that's happening, and it's it's accelerating incredibly, you know, the shift in how, the, uh, how people are perceiving and uh, working with energy uh, anymore. I mean, it's just changing by leaps and bounds. This is an exciting time to be in, for us to have incarnated in. We chose a good time to be back here right now. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I have to agree with that. So um, let's see. I, I saw recently another, uh, just to give another little success story, because I know they're lots of fun for people. I like to tell them. I like, <laughs> and Absolutely. I like to We'd like to hear more. Tell us, tell us. Yeah, so... Uh, uh, there was a, uh, a Labrador uh, in Bellingham named uh, Zuzu, and he'd been limping for about a year, and he couldn't do his favorite activity, which was to uh, do this activity called barn hunt, where they get out into the barn, and people have hidden these things that they're supposed to find by scent, and they're supposed to do it in uh, just two minutes, and they have to get back across the finish line in that two-minute time, and there's like six of them that are hidden. So it's a, you know, it's a rapid fire exercise. And anyway, he hadn't been able to do that because they don't let dogs who are limping uh, get involved in doing that activity. So anyway, the owner had heard about me from a friend and uh, I went to, to Bellingham in that case and I saw that dog on a Tuesday and uh, did my work on it and then she brought it down to my office in Darrington on a Friday, which is, again, it's about a two-hour drive. I'm about two hours from everywhere. <laughs> anyway, uh, she brought him there, and on Friday he was about 90 to 95% better when he would uh, he would trot along. His first step, you could see him bobble a little bit, and then once he got trotting, there was no, no limp at all. And it was just an amazing transformation. And we worked on him uh, – multiple times since, and we've got him to completely 100% normal. And, and he'd been treating with chiropractors and acupuncturists and veterinarians for the whole year and hadn't, just hadn't got the results that, you know, he needed. So it's very exciting for all of us to see how quickly things can change when 
the person, you know, like me who knows it's all energy, does what needs to be done, and it starts to change for the animal. So you put him on the fast track to accelerated healing. Yeah, definitely did. Dr. Nellis, what do you think is going on um, in these wonderful cases? Do you think it's energy balancing or or sometimes giving more energy or removing energy? Because I know with people it can be uh, dealing with self-limiting beliefs. Like I had a belief that I was always going to have trouble walking and always have back pain because of um, having curvature of the spine. And when we worked that through in an hour, my leg length had shifted and I no longer had an inch difference between my legs and was Oops. just, the difference was incredible. And I've been able to hold it since. But right. as an animal, are you just talking aloud to them? What, what, what are you doing to help shift that energy? Okay, well, that's a great question. And yeah, what I do is, uh, is with the animals, it's usually more quiet except for when I pick up on that they really need, they have this feeling that they need to feel that the people know that they're good, and you know, mm-hmm. and that that happens a lot. So I do talk to them quietly, but a lot of times I just communicate uh, mentally, and that seems to work. Okay. I, okay. I don't uh, I don't claim to be an animal communicator because uh, first of all, I don't. There's other people who are way better at that than me. <laughs> just let Darcy or, or Robin or someone else do that. So uh, yes. Anyway, anyway uh, but I do know that that my thoughts are registered in the animal and how I'm feeling is definitely registered in the animal. But what I'm doing is, you know, I'm putting my hands on specific places uh, when when I'm in person and there's, you know, the tactile information through the sensory system makes changes in the brain. And it's those changes that affect what happens coming out of the body. So most people seem to think that, uh, that our, you know, we have these motor systems that run that run our musculoskeletal system, but those things are completely useless if the sensory information coming into the brain is not complete and balanced. And that tends to be what happens is due to stresses, falls, uh, accidents, or emotional problems, uh, the, the sensory system starts changing the way it's uh, perceiving the world through the through the five senses. And the result is the output of the brain is no longer uh, coherent and balanced because it's getting bad information, you could say. It's getting information that's old and out of date and in response to old stresses instead of responding in the moment to what's needed now. So we do, essentially, uh, we do a little update physically. And when I'm doing the distance work, then that is more of a pure energy thing, but it's still all about balance. The energy that is contained within the animal is 100%, <clears throat> excuse me, is 100% and it's perfect all the time, but it doesn't mean it's perfect in its arrangement. And so we rebalance that energy in the animal or the human being, and then uh, healing begins to take place again because now the energy and the communication is complete. Wonderful. Thank you. You bet. Well, Dr. Nils, in the five minutes that we have left for the show, I'd like to ask you and Donya Wickham both, if you had one message that you could send out to our listeners tonight, what would that message be? Well, for me, I'll tell you that uh, I think my message would be uh, go to my website. <laughs> because <laughs> if you go to my website, message. <laughs> when you go to my website, you'll get the information you need to contact me. Uh, you can take an animal questionnaire that's on a page called uh, something like Healing Packages, and uh, that animal questionnaire gets right to me, and I can uh, then start to tune in and find out, okay, where do we need to go, and I can start to uh, talk to the individual about their animal uh, so we can get something done. And if it's somebody, you know, if you know somebody who has an animal that has a a mobility issue or a a health problem, uh, if it's in pain or, you know, it seems to be a mysterious condition, especially if it's in a younger animal and they need some help, you know, I'm a really good option because usually these animals has already been through the veterinary regime and it hasn't worked and that's fine with me. Then just, you know, that hasn't worked. Let's, uh, let's get me involved. Okay. Dr. Nels Rasmussen, go ahead for our listeners and call out your, uh, the URL of your website again. Okay. That is www.nels, N-E-L-S, 
HealingMinistry.com. Thank you for being my guest tonight, Dr. Nell. Thanks for having me.